Hello again, friends. It's Ben with the video for differential calculus. The topic for today is L'Hopital's rule. We're actually going to spend a couple of days on L'Hopital's rule. And the reason for that is L'Hopital's rule can get kind of complicated. So we're going to start today with some of the, uh, we're going to start with the basic case, which is solving a problem that has zero divided by zero. And then we'll advance on to looking at other indeterminate forms, infinity divided by infinity, infinity minus infinity, zero times infinity. There's various different things that we can do, okay? But as I say, we're gonna spend a couple of days on this and this is the first day. So let's see what L'Hopital's rule says in order to get going. All right. Yay. All right, looks like everything's gonna work. So L'Hopital's rule, and please, it is L'Hopital, it is not lay hospital. Um, if, you're, if you think I'm making fun of your accent, I'm not, I'm making fun of my accent. Uh, <clears throat> I, yeah, sometimes you'll see it spelled with an S put in there, but it's, an, it's, it's a silent S. And L'Hopital does mean the hospital, but it's named after a person, and it's a person, um, a French person. So, yeah, there's a actually a fun historical note on this. Uh, check and see if your textbook has that. I'm not going to waste your time with it here. All right, not that it's a waste of time to have historical notes, but you know. All right, so the very basic form of L'Hopital's rule says. If you've got a fraction that you're trying to take a limit of, if the top and the bottom both go to zero, then you will get the same limit if you take the derivatives of those two functions and then try again, okay? So <clears throat> the, the actual reason why this works is that if you, have a function that's differentiable, then close to x equals a, the value of the function is going to be close to f of a, and the difference there is going to be pretty close to what you get by taking f prime of a and multiplying by x minus a. So if we've got that being true for both f and g, then that means that this f of a and the g of a uh, would both be zero and disappear from, from the fraction. And then on the top and the bottom, you would have an x minus a from both functions. You could cancel out and you'd get the f prime and the g prime. So it's, it's actually really reasonable, but might not be something that we'd just think of, like all math, really. <laughs> So we're going to use it anytime, I shouldn't say anytime. If you try to do a limit and you cannot see a way to factor and cancel uh, or to use a special limit and it's zero over zero, then try L'Hopital's rule. Same thing for infinity over infinity. And if you see something that has uh, two factors, one going to zero and one, the other going to infinity, there's probably a way to rewrite that so that it's either zero over zero or infinity over infinity, okay? And then lastly, we'll look at an example today that has uh, infinity minus infinity. And those are a little trickier, okay? Eh, 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 I don't know what to say about them. You'll see, all right? Let's get going. <clears throat> so what we're taking a look at here is one where the limit has x going to zero and you get e to the x minus one over sine of two x. So as I've tried to uh, drill you on in the past, you always first, don't put an equal sign, but first check and see, can I just plug in? You'd have e to the zero minus one and then you'd have the sine of two times zero is still zero. So sine of zero. So you would have zero over zero, okay? And that's not your answer. So don't put an equal sign in front of it. 
right? But you're doing that check. If you can do that check in your head, great, all right? But if you need to write it down, like, you know, certain old people who can't remember things <laughs> need to, uh, go ahead and write it down, all right? Just don't say that the answer is equal to that. When you start doing the answer is equal to, limit, you have to continue to write limit until you stick the zero in for the final answer, all right? But your limit, and we're going to take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. This is not the quotient rule. This is L'Hopital's rule, all right? Make sure you don't get those two things confused. To, to be honest, the thing I do to make my bookkeeping easier is I jot down here LHR over my equal sign to help me remember I used L'Hopital's rule and that it had zero over zero. That means I confirmed and checked and found out it was zero over zero. Then if it was infinity over infinity or whatever else, you know, you would, you check before you actually do it. All right, so we're gonna take the derivative of the top. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Derivative of minus one is zero, so that part vanishes. Then, uh, on the bottom, the derivative of sine is cosine. And we still have the 2x in there, okay? Now, the chain rule tells us we have to multiply by the, the derivative of the 2x, which is just going to be 2, right? Now we're going to try plugging in. And so off to the side, I would say e to the 0, and I know that that's not zero, so it looks like we're in good shape. And then I'd say something about the cosine of zero and then times two, I can see that I'm gonna end up with one half. So for my proper answer over here, I will write equals e to the zero divided by cosine of zero times two, and then say that that's equal to one half, right? So <clears throat> please notice that I was super careful here and I did not just skip straight to the answer and not show you any work. Uh, from your perspective, that's because I'm trying to give you an explanation of what's happening, but I need you to keep that perspective as well because you need to show me you knew why you got that answer, right? There's lots of ways to get these answers without doing the actual work. And I'm trying to, you know, test you over whether you know why things are true. So, so our final answer here was just one half, but your solution involved this whole deal here of getting along there, right? And make sure that you don't uh, write that this scratch work off to the side is your answer, but rather it's something that you were writing to make sure that what you were going to give as an answer was, was going to work out. All right. So here is another of these sort of things. Now, this is a little bit more complicated, and sometimes you're going to run into these where you have to take more than one derivative in order to get to the answer. And so I want to point out an error that some people will make on this as we go along. So out to the side, I'm taking sine of zero, well, that's zero, and then zero plus zero squared, well, this is a zero over zero, right? So I'm going to write down here equals via L'Hopital's rule in the zero over zero case, Limit, notice I continue to write limit. And then I'll take the derivatives. Derivative of sine is cosine. And then the derivative of that polynomial is just one plus two X, okay? Now, you would try plugging in the zero here. And you would say, well, the cosine of zero divided by one plus two times zero. Now, the bottom, you clearly see that that's not going to go to zero. The top, 
sometimes people get mixed up with their trigonometry and they forget that cosine of zero is one, but this will turn out to be one over one. And that means we're done with L'Hopital's rule. Sometimes people will make the mistake that they'll say, oh, you know, I'm just gonna use L'Hopital's rule again because there's a trig function there. And then they'll take the derivative of cosine and get a minus sine and turn this into, I think it turns out to be negative one half when you do that or something like that. Um, or no, no, it actually turns out to be zero, but that's not appropriate. This is not a zero over zero case anymore. This is um, the cosine of zero over one plus two times zero equals one over one, which is one. One over one, you don't get to use L'Hopital's rule. You don't need to. This is the reason why I always emphasized to y'all when we first did these limits. Plug in, see if you can get the answer. If it's zero over zero, you have to do something else. Sometimes it was factor and cancel. Sometimes it's L'Hopital's rule. All right, that should get us the idea here. All right, this is another one. And we're gonna go off to the side and say, all right, I've got one minus one plus the log of one is zero. Okay, it's looking like it's zero on top. One plus, see the cosine of one pi. So cosine of pi is negative one. Well, that's zero over zero. So let's go ahead here and write, I'm using L'Hopital's rule. I have the zero over zero case, I confirmed it. I'm gonna take the limit still as X goes to one. And now I just have to go through and do the derivatives of the top and the bottom separately. Again, not the quotient rule. Derivative of one is zero. Derivative of minus X is minus one. Derivative of log X is one over X. All that divide by one plus derivative of a cosine is a negative sine. So minus sine pi x. And then the chain rule says you have to take the derivative of the pi x. So you get that pi. So I'm going to, before I plug in, write a simpler form of this and just have minus one plus one over x on the top. And on the bottom, I will have one minus pi sine pi x, okay? Now I'm gonna try plugging in. Negative one plus one over one, so one. So it's looking on the top like we're getting a zero. And then one minus pi times the sine of pi is gonna be zero. So that means the bottom turned out to be one, not zero. So since we have zero over one, that is not zero over zero, there's no more L'Hopital's rule. So we write out here equals <clears throat> negative one plus one over one, divide by one minus pi sine pi, and that's equal to zero over one, which is zero. And then we're done, okay? So make sure that you catch this. Don't use L'Hopital's rule when you don't have L'Hopital's rule to use, because if it's not zero over zero or infinity over infinity, we can't do that. All right, speaking of infinity over infinity, here we go with this one. We're going to be <clears throat> plugging in infinity. If you notice off on the side, I'm doing my air quotes. So when you plug in infinity, it's infinity is not a number. So you don't really plug it in. You're just saying, what is it going to go to when I put larger and larger and larger numbers in? And of course, if you know the graph of e to the x goes off to infinity, then that says that we've got infinity over 
And then the x squared plus x, well, as x goes to infinity, x squared will go there even faster. So we'll have infinity like that. We have infinity over infinity, and we're going to use L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so that's a slightly different form than the previous ones. Um, I will share with you all that when I learned this material uh, originally, way back when, I got completely the wrong sort of impression about stuff, and I did did stuff like just canceling infinities. And my teacher went, "What in the hell are you doing?" And uh, it was it, it was pretty funny. I I was not the best of students back then. So, all right. We're working this out and we are going to use L'Hopital's rule. We have determined that it is the infinity over infinity case. You can only do this if it's either zero over zero or infinity over infinity. Our limit is gonna have X going to positive infinity. And then we just have to take the derivatives on the top and bottom. Derivative of E to the X. Yep, E to the X. And then the derivative of X squared is two X and plus one. Now you do the same thing. E to the infinity is infinity. And as X goes to infinity, two X plus one is also gonna to go to infinity. So this is the first time we've encountered this particular trick, but if you get something that's still a, a, an indeterminate form, you still use L'Hopital's rule. So that means we're going to say equals using L'Hopital's rule, still the infinity over infinity case. We checked it, and this is just you know filling out the forms, so to speak, to say that we checked it. Limit as x is still going to minus, or <laughs> minus, x is still going to positive infinity. The derivative on the top is still e to the x, no matter how many times we take that derivative. And then the derivative of two x plus one will just be two. So we're going to be getting an infinity on the top and on the bottom, it's going to two. That's not infinity over infinity. It's not zero over zero. It's just gonna be infinity. So we write down here equals infinity, okay? We don't write e to the infinity, okay? We, we just write equals an infinity, right? You gotta make sure that you don't write down things that uh, will embarrass you later. Um, <clears throat> lots, wow, lots of people would benefit from that particular piece of advice, right? Okay, so again, uh, limit as X is going to infinity, and this time it's ln X and square root of X. Now, if you look at your graph of ln X, you know it does something like that. And if you look at your graph of the square root of X, you know, eh, that, that didn't quite get it. You know, it does something kind of similar. They're both going off to infinity, but they're going off to infinity relatively slowly. So when we look at this, we are getting an infinity over infinity case. And so we say equals via L'Hopital's rule in the infinity over infinity case, which I have checked. And now we say limit X is still going to infinity, but now on the top, we have to say the derivative of log X, which is one over X, and then the derivative of square root of X, which you may have to think about, that's X to the one half power. So we have one half X to the minus one half power. And that gets messy. So let's, let's go ahead and simplify our algebra before we go farther. And so we say limit X is still going to plus infinity. And those negative powers there, um, I'm gonna write one over X and I'm gonna have to flip things over and have two times X to the one half. So two times the square root of X over the one. That means I can do a little bit of cancellation, this square root of X versus that X and have a square root of X here. So I am taking the limit as X goes to positive infinity of two divided by the square root of X. Now we off to the side, think about it. That's two over infinity. 
And remember, anytime you have a positive power of x <clears throat> and you're going to infinity, you can pull the same trick and say that the answer is equal to zero. Don't write two over infinity and then say equals zero because infinity is not a number. You can't actually do arithmetic with it. I'm not going to yell at you about it, but you know, it's 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 sort of like when you're first learning to do addition as a kid and you count it on your fingers. Later on, if you look back on it and go, oh man, I had to count on my fingers to do that. You know, it's, uh, yeah. So, all right. Continuing on here, this has a different case. Notice that if we plug in here our infinity and then e to the, oh my God, what? Well, if you're thinking about e to the positive infinity, that goes off to infinity. But we're talking here about e to the negative infinity. And that means that it's going to zero. So we have the infinity times zero case. This is one of our many indeterminate forms, okay? However, it's not zero over zero, and it's not infinity over infinity. So we can't exactly apply the L'Hopital's rule. We have to first get it into a form where it will be one of those two things. Now, because you've got a negative power there, it gives you a nice suggestion of what to do with this. And so I'm going to write x over e to the square root of x, right? Now, when I plug in the infinity for the x, well, of course, I get an infinity. And when I think about the infinity for the x, well, the square root in the previous problem we saw went to infinity. So we've got e to the infinity. And so that means we've got infinity there as well. Now it's in the L'Hopital's rule form. Now we can say equals via L'Hopital's rule in the infinity over infinity case, which we checked, limit as x goes to positive infinity. The top is easy, it's just one. The bottom is a little harder. Derivative e to the anything is e to the exact same thing and then the chain rule says we have to take the derivative of that thing. And we saw in the previous problem that the derivative of square root of x is really one over two square roots of x. And that's a mess. So we're going to want to see what happens here and say the limit as x goes to positive infinity. And what do we have? Two square roots of x divided by e to the square root of x. Hmm. So when I plug into that, I've got infinity over infinity. Ah, this is feeling a little bit messy. Okay. So <clears throat> let's try it again and see what happens. So now um, I've got L'Hopital's rule working for me. Infinity over infinity, limit as x goes to positive infinity. On the top, I will have two times one over two square roots of x, divide by e to the square root of x, because that's the same things we had before, right? One over two square roots of x, right? Now this time, we've got something that cancels. And I'm running a little low on room here. So I'm going to go ahead and write 2 over e to the square root of x. And now my top is going to 2 and my bottom is going to infinity. That means this is going to go to 0. Yay! But notice we had to use L'Hopital's rule twice and we had to use some messy algebra. So um, almost every time that we have the infinity times zero, we are going to 
have to take one of these things and put it to the bottom. If that thing had not been something where the negative power suggested to do that, we might have to just take one of the factors kind of at random. It might be the zero one, it might be the infinity one. It's hard to say ahead of time, but take one of those, uh, one of those factors and put one over that into the denominator. In general, try to think ahead and say, which one will it be easiest to take the derivative of? That's usually the suggestion on that. All right, let's try another one. And this is gonna be the last one, and it's getting a different form for us. So the thing that's happening here is that when you plug in the plus infinity to the square root, you get, eh, you get infinity minus another infinity. This is yet another indeterminate form, infinity minus infinity. Now, we could do this without L'Hopital's rule. We did a problem like this way back when, when we first started talking about infinity stuff. The trick we did then was to multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate here. So you looked at this as being over one, and then you multiplied by square root plus thing plus the x. And so that's totally doable. I'm trying to force this into a form that we've already done L'Hopital's rule with though, okay? So I'm gonna pull a weird trick. So the thing I'm gonna do here is do the limit as x goes to plus infinity. And I'm not using L'Hopital's rule yet. I'm going to take this piece here and I'm going to factor out an x. So what I mean by that is I'm gonna take the square root, factor out an x squared, be left with one plus three over x, and then minus x, okay, equals limit x is still going to plus infinity, x times the square root. Now, if we had been, if we had the possibility that our x's might be negative, we'd have to say absolute value of x. But this x is going to, to plus infinity, it's gonna be really, really super duper positive, okay? But now we have one plus three over x. Now, I'm going to, I, I haven't finished writing. I'm gonna go ahead and factor out the x from both pieces. That means that the x that I have there, when I factor out, I've got one. Now, if you look at what's happened here, the x is going to infinity, right? Square root is going to one and then minus one. So this has turned into infinity times zero, okay? And we want to pull that trick that I referred to of uh, turning it into the top, something on top divided by one over uh, one of those things. If you did that with the square root business, this would be a nightmare to take the derivative of. So don't do that. <laughs> so one of the, the main things of doing math is you have to work hard but not, not crazy hard, right? You do hard work, but no harder than it has to be. And so now we will have one over X down there, right? So <clears throat> multiplying by X is the same as dividing by one over X. Seems a little crazy, right? But as X is going to infinity, now we've got zero on top and zero on the bottom, okay? Hope we don't have to L'Hopital's rule it more than once because that that would really suck. But still the limit as X is going to infinity. Remember, you have to just keep writing that limit. I will literally take off if you don't write the limit, okay? So make sure you do. Okay, the top, we've got something that is a square root. So we're gonna have one half of that thing to the minus one half power 
and then minus the derivative of one is just zero. So, oh, 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 nope. Did y'all did y'all catch that I messed up there? Yeah, I forgot to do the chain rule. The chain rule says multiply by the derivative of the stuff inside. The stuff inside is a one, so the derivative of that is zero. And plus, let's see if we think of that as three times x to the minus one, then we end up with uh, minus three x to the minus two. And we'll kind of we'll kind of try to make that look nicer in a second. And then minus the derivative of the one being just zero. Okay. If you're saying, oh my God, Ben, that looked like a nightmare. Yeah, just imagine if you'd had one over all that. Oof. Okay, so the bottom is really x to the minus one power. So we'll write minus x to the minus two power. And now, oh, did, oh I forgot to write it. This was all L'Hopital's rule and it was zero over zero. Okay, so this is equal limit, x is going to infinity, and we got to kind of, kind of make it look as nice as we can. So it looks like it's got minus three halves out front, and it looks like there would be an x squared square root one plus three over x, blah, and one on top of that, oof. And this is all, eh, eh, I'm sorry, folks. That looks too messy and it's gonna be hard for you to read later. Let me rewrite it as just one plus three over x to the minus one half, and then times x to the minus two. Because downstairs here, you're gonna write minus x to the minus two, and then I'll change colors on my pen, and we'll just cross that out. And let's also cross out the minuses, and then, we can go ahead and plug in. Because as our x is going to infinity, this three over x is just gonna to go to zero. And so the rest of it turns into three halves, one plus zero to the, to the minus one half, but you know, it's one. So this is equal to three halves. That was pretty messy, okay? But it got a lot of things in there. Now, you could solve this without L'Hopital's rule, but <clears throat> you have to be very careful with your algebra in both cases. So, all right. I think that's got us for examples on this. I will see you all in class.